So how does equity accounting work? Let me try and explain. Equity accounting is appropriate when you have an associate, significant influence, or when you have a joint venture. In other words, you've got an arrangement where you've got joint control and you've got an interest in the net assets rather than the individual assets and liabilities. The headline message is that equity accounting works with one line so that you've got one line on the statement of financial position non-current asset investment in associate joint venture and one line in the group p l income from associate joint venture now basically from the balance sheet's point of view what you're doing is you're taking the original consideration that you paid to go into the arrangement the original investment and then you will add on the share of the post-acquisition retained earnings, the post-acquisition profits. And those post-acquisition profits, which are added to the top of the balance sheet, are also added to the bottom of the balance sheet because they'll also appear in group equity as an addition to retained earnings. And in the P&L, in the group P&L, you'll take the share of the profit after tax. All right, you'll take a share of the profit after tax of the associate, of the joint venture. Now, the numbers are different, and let me try and explain in a simplistic way. Let's imagine that you put some money in a bank account. Let's imagine you put 100,000 into a bank account and that interest rates are 10%. So a year later, you've got an extra 10,000. However, during the year, you've taken out two. You've withdrawn two. You've received cash of two. And in this context, that would effectively be dividends. Now, in the group P&L, if we are using equity accounting, the, the share of the profit after tax is 10,000. So 10,000 is the profit after tax. That's what we're taking in the P&L. But the share of the retained earnings is only eight because we've only retained eight because we have withdrawn two. In other words, when the associate pays a dividend, and the parent receives that dividend, they're debiting cash and crediting the investment. The dividend received from the associate is not recognised as income. What's recognised as income in the P&L is what's been earned in the period, the 10,000 in my example, not the 8,000 that's been kept back, nor the 2,000 that's been received. The investment is at 108. So the carrying value of the assets gone up by eight by the retained earnings and therefore the equity goes up by the retained earnings. So the P&L has in it 10. Yeah, debit. The P&L has it in it 10. Debit the investment, credit the P&L by 10. But when you receive the dividend, you're debiting cash and crediting the investment by two. So therefore, that the investment only goes up by the share of the retained earnings, but the P&L goes up by the amount of the um, share of the profit after tax. Hope that makes sense. Fantastic.